being stopped twice. That was by Semi Schultz in 05, Mirko Krokop in 02. Lighting out of the red corner, standing 190 centimeters tall. Official weight 105.2 kilograms. He comes to us from Breda, Curacao. He's the K1 World Grand Prix 2008 European Champion, Errol the Bone Crusher. Zimmerman. Errol Zimmerman, who explored mixed martial arts at Dynamite last New Year's Eve, lost by a toehold to the Red Speedo one Minoa man. Big hello to you. Anthony Lane grabbed the eyelids and all the team from the Kinaku Man top team followers, the many hundreds of them around the world. Here we go, Rima Bunjaski and Errol had a stare down of epic proportions at the press conference yesterday, but today Remy is not engaging. We are set for three by three, two knockdowns in one round, and the fight is all over. Who will face Semi Schilt in semi final number two? Michael Chevello, Sugar Ray Sefo, Mike Kogan with your inside from the Yokohama Arena. With that stare down, I gotta say, I was impressed with Rooney because he was able to put that, you know, nonsense uh, aside and just focus on his game. Listen, Remy is a stunt. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know why people are hating on him. Remy is, he is a real deal, bro. There's a gentleman outside the ring, a very eloquent, a very intelligent champion who flies the K1 flag proudly. Remy, he was particularly peeved by the comments of Alistair Overeem when Alistair came out and said mixed martial arts is a lot harder than K1. Remy took it personally, and you know he'd love to see Alistair against him in the final here tonight. Just a feeling up process for the first 35 seconds here of the opening round. Expected to be the legs and the knees of Bonjaski and the sheer hand power of Errol Zimmerman. Round kick from Zimmerman, countered by Bonjaski, locks on a Muay Thai clinch and a late knee of his own there from the Bone Crusher. I like to see Zimmerman put some punch combinations together to start this fight. I think he's waiting too much right now. Inside thigh kick, nicely high up on the thigh from Zimmerman, then goes upstairs, tries to loop the shin around the back of the neck. Right hand couldn't get through that Virgin's defense. Jumping three! It's Harold that gets airborne and he gets tied with the left hook! Nicely done from Remy, but Remy does tend to punch with the inside of the gloves. They're more slapping punches than drilling in the fists, or drilling in the knuckles, I should say. One minute 35 remaining, jab two from Errol. Remy, look for the right hand counter. Nevertheless, he did drop Alistair with that slapping left hook. He did indeed, which raised some major question marks about Alistair's chin. We'll see if Bada Hari can expose it in their semi-final. Oh, body shot from Errol. And Bonjaski just said, dude, my midsection is ripped. Ain't nothing getting through there. And it's ripped as Peter Hurts. Jumping knee again from Errol. What is Errol thinking here, right? Double jumping knee in this round. Well, I, you know, he's got to try and stick to his game. And that's, you know, getting that rough to guy up. Right now, I think he's trying to play Remy's game. And... It's not working for him right now. I wonder if Errol has been frustrated already by the fact that none of his punches are getting through here on Remy. They're all being caught by the nice double forearms guard. The combination he just threw, that's exactly what he needs to keep doing. The throw combinations and look for the uppercut. Oh, the big kibosh! The big kibosh! has tagged him and Errol goes down in the first round! So much and a hand right for Remy! So I'm much for those words. snapping punches! I'm eating my words! <laughs> So much I'm for the words. punches. Remy Bonjaski with the headache maker. The money shot. I did not expect that. What a violent Grand Prix we have seen so far. Well, and Errol didn't expect that either, which is why he got caught with it. Finally, it looks like one of our quarterfinals might get out of the first round. Zimmerman has been dropped. He was dropped oh. in the quarterfinals by Butter Hurry last year. Well, he was a drop, he was knocked out cold. Into the first, it's got to be a 10 8 to Remy. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, right as the bell went, Zimmerman did not look happy at all. And so he shouldn't be. Well, the thing is, you don't want to be 10 8 against Remy because you do not, it's not easy to score back on Remy and it's not easy to knock him down. I state it yet again, and I asked this to Errol when I was doing those youtube.com slash K1 videos. I said, Errol, Remy is so frustrating to fight. We saw Bada get frustrated last year. How do we know you're not going to get frustrated? And he said, because I'm going to just power through his defense. But I believe that he's already frustrated here in the first round, Ray, because he threw a lot of punches and nothing got through. 
And I think he's frustrated even more so uh, for the rounds to come because I don't think he expected to be dropped by Remy. And now that's no, happened. No, of course not. And that's what I'm you saying. Know? You don't want to have a 10-8 round against right. Remy. That's just not something you easily come back from. 42 K1 fights, 33 wins, one of the highest win-loss ratios of any K1 fighter for Remy Bunjaski. And that is why he plays a beautiful peek and boo game. A highly intelligent fighter, always cerebral. And he almost eats a right hand. Jumping me, the flying gentleman getting airborne for the first time. And now Errol wants to turn it in to a Pier 6 brawl. Errol needs to look for an uppercut up the center. Jaski, gloves glued to his jawline. And it's good to see Errol come out and actually put combination together because now that means that he's forgotten about that last round and he wants to win this. Big leg kick to the lead quadricep from Remy. Body shot from Errol, nicely done, just tenderizing the left side of the carcass. Uppercut, almost took out a low-flying aircraft. Outside thigh kick from Errol. Well, one thing is for sure so far, whoever gets out of this fight victorious will have the, the longest fights. Absolutely. One thing's also for sure, Mike Hogan won't be speaking for the next week. Outside thigh kick from Remy. Uppercut again from Errol, just needs a little bit more mustard behind it. He's got to follow that uppercut through the chest. So that lands on the button. Remy checks the low kicks. Throws the right hand, cracks away to those quads again. Sticky jab on Remy Bunjaski. And again, the uppercut not getting through. He goes to the body, tries to drop the hands. And Remy goes upstairs. And again, double round kick off the right leg. Gotta love the Muay Thai techniques of Remy Bonjaski. Well, I gotta say, I'm impressed with Remy because it's the first time I've seen him drop anybody. Well, I mean, in a tournament fight, you know, with a straight right. Body shot Slapping nicely punches. turned to the liver. Indeed. Needed to throw the counter right hand there, did Errol. Now he throws up the center tube, jumping knee, looking to plant it between the eyes of Bonjaski. Right hand from Remy. Couldn't get past the left glove. Trying to back. You know, Remy's Merrill. head movement is also helping him avoid some of Not just putting up his hands, he, you know, he slips punches very well. And what I like about Remy here tonight, as always, he is changing levels. Never predictable. Upstairs, downstairs, and also to the midsection. It is the mark of experience. It is the mark of the three-time and defending K1 Grand Prix champion. Leg check from Errol. Good round kick to the upper left rib cage from Remy. Kills a right hand from Errol. He rips into the midsection. And Remy felt that one. 15 seconds on the clock here in the second stanza. Errol again comes in. Here's the handiwork from the bone crusher. And we're gonna keep, keep that left hand up because Remy's looking for that overhand right and twice he's just missed the button. Look at the defense of Bunjaski. Nothing getting through cleanly. He just rides and rolls with those punches. Nothing got through. I mean, it, it looked very impressive, but it was like, you know, but, but nothing actually got through for any damage. I think, I'm sure it scores with the judges, but I think one thing to be said about Remy is his patience and him sticking, I think that's why a lot of fighters kind of despise him and, and, and you know, kind of say he's too safe, he's too secure. He has a game plan and he fights for his game plan. And no matter what you do, you can't get him out of his game. Just some clarification of the official times of our stoppages in the quarterfinals so far. Once again, Butter Hurry stopping Razvan Karayev in 38 seconds. Alistair Overeem stopping Teixeira in one minute and six seconds. Semi Schultz stopping Jerome Labana in 1 minute and 27 seconds. Peter Ertz's record of an overall total time of 6 minutes 43 is now in the sights of Bada, Semi, and the Reem. Here we go, second round of action. Errol Zimmerman, who tried to throw down with the punches, but Bada, I should say Remy, harder to catch than an ice cube in a KY factory. Final round of action, 2018, two judges, 1918, one judge in favor of Bonjaski. I must say, Remy not only has a great, great defense, he also has a good chin. He can take a shot. What can Zimmerman do here in the final round? He's got to find the big boom shaka like her off the right hand. Inside fight trick, trying to compress that femoral artery. Bunjaski, look how he hitches the shoulders up. He tucks the jawline. Gloves are up nice and high. 
Looks through his brow. Zimmerman setting for one shot, but he needs to maybe try and drop those hands. Maybe go downstairs a couple of leg kicks, even fake a jab, then power through with the right hand. I think once again, Zimmerman needs to listen to Ray Sefos' advice. Remy likes to drop his head, and if he times it with that uppercut, they could land. And he also keeps his elbows kind of too wide out where an uppercut would come right through. Exactly. And also, if he's going to go for that body shot, I, I like to get away from those jumping knees. I mean, those jumping knees are Remy's... Uh, that's what Remy's known for. So he's going to, you know, if he does it, he's going to know it's going to come. You know what I mean? So I like to see him use his hands a bit more, go to the body and fire those uppercut with conviction. And hopefully something will land. But I mean, constantly Remy drops his head, and if he was to time it with some uppercuts, he could do some serious damage. Once again, you should go to his corner. You should just be in the corner. It was a nice uppercut from Errol Zimmerman, tries to clip him with the lead left hook. Both men trade lead kicks. It was Bonjaski who drew the short straw in that exchange. Halfway through the final round, kicks to the back leg. Bonjaski goes to the inside thigh, and he hooks him sweetly over the top of the right club. Again, Errol throws the uppercut and Bonjeski that slapping left hand in the blue quarter. Bonjeski will try and finish, but often he goes the distance. He holds the record for the slowest ever K1 Grand Prix victory. It took him 36 minutes to win the 2004 crown. He does have a top five win as, as well. 2003 Grand Prix took him 13 minutes and 44 seconds. Ooh, he timed it nicely. Round kicked the uppercut. I haven't seen that before. 45 seconds on the clock. Body shot to the bread basket from Zimmerman. I see Zimmerman throw those hands. One, two, three. Touch with that left, that left hook and find that big right uppercut up the center. Zimmerman, who came in as the underdog with the bookmakers in this one, plus 280. Bonjaski at minus 350 for the win here in the quarterfinals. Jab two from Errol. Flowing forward again, the bone crusher. Kicks out the inside back five. High knee, but Remy's guard just too good. And they drift back to center ring. Final 10 seconds. That uppercut went so high. St. Peter knocked it back. High left round kick from Remy. Zimmerman needs one big shot. Throw the uppercut, son. It's too late. Remy will go through here, brother Ray. Oh, absolutely. Um... You know, he scored a knockdown. He's dominated the rounds. Great defense. Absolutely, he's going to go through. Poor Hammers in the corner there. Of Errol Zimmerman. The legendary Ivan Hippolytes across the ring in the corner of Remy Bonjaski. Let's take a look as it went down in that third round, Mike and Ray. Well, I mean, pretty much what we expected. You know, uh, Remy's superior defense and, and his ability to, uh, you know, pick apart his opponents with his patience and, and stick, just stick into his game plan and Zimmerman's inability to find a way to, you know, cap to capitalize on the mistakes and take advantage of, uh, of some opportunities, which, Ray, as you said, you know, the uppercuts were there many a times. A absolutely, I, I, you know, the thing about finding fighters like Remy, you know, putting combinations together, you gotta be able to apply it at all times. And there it is, unanimous decision, 30-27, 30-28, 29-28. All one way traffic to the flying gentleman and the defending K1 champion.